good morning everyone. Does anybody know what today is? <laughs> Pentecost Sunday. So those of you who knew and were warned are wearing a splash of red. Well done. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit here today by singing two very beautiful songs. Refresh my heart.
what beautiful words. We're asking God to release God's power and let God's presence fall on us as we worship at Pentecost. And we can be assured that God does. Welcome to everybody. Welcome to the warmth of worship on this cold winter's day. And welcome to those who are watching at home. We pray that you are in a warm and comfortable place and that you too are aware of God's love within you and around you. You're probably a little surprised to see me up here today. I'm a little surprised too. <laughs> at 20 past eight, I was bumbling along on my usual Sunday morning routine and uh, received a message from Michael to say uh, he's been in touch closely with someone who has COVID and he felt he had symptoms this morning. So. He felt it unwise to share them around. So Judith is leading worship and Judith and I have put our heads together and we thought it was just a lovely opportunity to allow us and you to share our stories this morning of God's action in our lives and our awareness of the presence of the Holy Spirit. So later on when we have the time of the message, I just invite anyone who would like to, to share a time when they felt close to God, when they felt led by the Spirit. Um, yes, so, and it can just be a very short snippet. We don't want any too long stories, but I, I know God will work amongst us and lead us in doing that. So... Uh, yes, so also, if you would like to look at your notice sheet or if you re read it online, our notice is the two particular things I wanted to draw your attention to are um, the forum on Today Week at Hobart North Uniting Church on uh, the crisis in housing with especially focus on women who are over 45 or 50. You may have seen on the news there is, there is a crisis in housing full stop but for single women who may not have, have have as much superannuation or availability to things as others, it's doubly so. And I know we've talked about using our land here for that purpose and we seem to keep getting stumbling blocks in our way. So that's a point for prayer. So I invite you to go along to that, to listen to a number of speakers and share ideas and maybe inspire, be inspired about what we might be able to do. And also, it's a little further off, but on the 24th of June from 6 to 10 here, there's our regular karaoke night for those that like karaoke and even those that don't. Come along and have a little bit of fun um, at 6 o'clock and our community will be joining us for that. So everyone's welcome. Uh, I think they're the only notices I know of. Does anyone else? Yes, Scott, thanks. Um, currently, we have four people watching online. One of them is Michael, who has already sent through some messages. So he says, hello, dear church, missing you all on our birthday. And then he says, great harmonies, you web girls and Jackie, um, during the singing. Um, and also beautiful flowers too. So thank you. I think Jean, Jean did them um, this week. Um, also, just to re again reiterating the karaoke night. If you want to come, come prepared for... Um, a great night just to even just watch other people sing um, and make fools of oh, No, sorry. Um, <coughs> watch other people sing. Even if you don't, can't sing a note, you are more than welcome to come along and just enjoy the atmosphere. We have um, uh, our residents coming as well as um, a, a bunch of um, teacher's aides from Margate Primary School and possibly a bunch of teacher's aides from the e-learning um, school. Um, so there's going to be a sing-off between them um, and then there's going to be some other sing-offs happening. So there's going to be a fair crowd. We've also got the youth group, um, which is the Hobart North Uniting um, uh, youth group that are coming along. So um, there's going to be a fair crowd here. So we'll, I'll still only have the four microphones set up. Um, and you can come along and sing. Uh, if you have a particular request of a song that you would like to hear, then 
please let me know beforehand and we can make sure that the, the guys that do the karaoke, they'll actually find that song for us. So they'll go out of their way and find any song that might be a little bit obscure if you're not sure about it. So let us know. And also in September, we've, early September, we've got a quiz night. So start thinking about um, some uh, themes that you would like um, to uh, be dressed up as or whatever. So come along to that as well. Thank you. Well, I'm probably a little bit out of line, but I'm going to ask for a favour because I've got a friend who's raising money through a GoFundMe page for Hannah, who is in the Ukraine. She's a single mum with two boys and uh, we're basically, uh, my friend Christine is trying to get $7,000 together to uh, allow the expense of airfares, these replications, and, uh, and, and getting her, her to Australia, which would be very different from where she is, but that's, that's her choice, and Christine and Hannah have been friends for a long time. Um, so if anyone would like the details of the GoFundMe page or would like to uh, donate, if something untowards happens, the money will end up going to the Ukrainian society in Hobart. So, so yeah, if some reason visas or flights or something don't happen. Um, so yeah, if anyone can support with that, please see me after church. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jesus. We acknowledge that we stand today, sit today, worship today on the lands of the Muhinia people. We hear their laughter in the wind. We hear them splashing in the water. We hear their praise and their prayers going up to Creator God in our spirit and in our worship today. We acknowledge the past and present elders and those to come in the future. Call to worship. I think those first two songs that we had called us to worship. My definition of call to worship is that place where we leave the busyness of our world and our life behind and we come to a place doesn't have to be a church can just be a rock on the beach where we open ourselves to the spirit and hear God so I encourage you today as I sing you a song to do that just give you a few minutes to rest think about the spirit and open up to the spirit
trust you are all called to the Spirit. Let's sing a beautiful song, one of my favourites, and one that I learnt when I was in England many, many years ago. And I asked the church where I was if they could give me a copy of the music. And sure enough, it turns out to be a Stuart Townend song. He's one of my favourites. So I brought the music back to Kingston Uniting Church, and it's one of our favourites now. Please stand if you're able to sing Pour Over Me. for the kids bit. I'm so glad to see you two girls here today. And Lauren, come and give me a hug, Lauren. <laughs> I know she's bigger than me. <laughs> Are there any kids in the, uh, in the crash? No. All right. Let's just, I won't get you to come out the front and sit on the floor like Michael does because I can't get up again. <laughs> today is a very special day. Does anybody know what it's called? I know you do, Lauren. Do you, Yana or Grace? Do you know what it's called? Probably not, but you're wearing red, so perhaps you do know. Was that intentional, Anita? It was. <laughs> Lovely, wonderful. And you're wearing a sort of um, almost fiery kind of top there. <laughs> it's lovely to see you. We've got many special days in the church when things happen to Jesus. Can anybody think of the very first thing that we celebrate when Jesus was, well, I'll give you a clue, it's called Christmas. So what do you think happened at Christmas? He was born. Thank you, the big kid at the back. <laughs> Jesus was born. And then, of course, we remember the next thing on our church calendar is when he was crucified, which doesn't seem like a happy thing, but those of us who understand what was going on, and I have to confess that I only understand it very through a glass darkly, uh, we have Good Friday, and can anybody tell me what happens after Good Friday, three days later? You can tell me, Lauren, go on. Does Grace know? Grace. Easter, well done. And then after Easter, lots of things happened. On Easter, we celebrate him rising again from the dead, 
And then 40 days after that, well, he appeared to the disciples and they were amazed. They thought, oh, is this a ghost? And he was in a way, but he was also, well, he was Jesus, so he could be a ghost and he could be a man, he could do anything. So he spent some 40 days with the disciples and then he ascended into heaven and they watched him go. Can you imagine how they must have felt when they saw him going up into heaven? What do you think, Lauren? How do you think they must have felt when they saw him go? Just imagine you had a really beautiful friend and you saw her fly off to another country. How does it make you feel? Yeah, they must have felt quite sad. But one thing that Jesus had promised them when he was here was that he would not leave us alone. He would send a friend and he said that friend will be a counsellor. That means somebody who helps you and is very wise and a comforter. When you fall over, Yana, does mum, do you go to mum crying or to dad? And do they pick you up and give you a lovely cuddle? They're your comforter. And that's what this special friend does to us. I wonder if the disciples were thinking that this friend would be a physical person. Probably they did. But one day, the disciples, the friends, the followers of Jesus, were all up in a room on top of a house. And they were feeling scared. Does anybody know why they were feeling scared? Yes, Grace. Oh, good girl, yes. Because they thought that the people who took Jesus away and crucified him, the Romans were going to come back and do the same to them. And indeed, outside in the street, there were Roman soldiers and they were looking for the disciples, the followers of Jesus. So they had every right to be scared. I would have been scared too. Then suddenly, in the middle of all their fear, they heard a rushing wind and they saw above each other's heads flickering flames. Now, I don't know about you, but if I saw flickering flames above any of your heads, I'd call the fire brigade. <laughs> but they knew, they knew that this was God. This was Jesus in another way, in another form. And we call it the Holy Spirit. And they were filled with power, with energy. And they went out into the whole world telling people about Jesus because they were no longer afraid. So that's what we're celebrating today. We call it the birthday of the church, because if we didn't have the Holy Spirit, none of us would be sitting here today. So let's stand and sing. I think it's called Move All Over the World, something like that. Oh, there's a couple of images there. Do you want to just go back to those, Scott? I wasn't sure if they were there. Um, what, what do you reckon is happening there? Something I really hope doesn't happen to me because I don't know how to change a tyre. I hate to admit that. So what's happening there in that picture? Yana, do you know? What do you reckon? Don't know? Do you know, Grace? What's happening? Can you, oh, it's a bit hard to see, but the tyre has gone flat. It's got no air in it, and it won't go along the road. And the next image, what's happened there? It's a balloon that doesn't have any air in it. So it's not going to take anybody anywhere. So we all need the breath, the air of the Holy Spirit. Let's stand and sing that song.
we come now to our prayers of thanks and confession. Let us pray. There will be nothing on the screen, so I invite you, if you would like to, to bow your heads, if you'd rather just have your eyes open and be aware of what's around you. That is also fine. And the prayer will finish with, I will say, in the name of Christ we are alive, we are made new, so we can say thanks be to God. And I invite you to join in with thanks be to God. So let us pray. God who created, who breathed life into clay and gave humans and all creation life, we come in awe and wonder at the life you give us. We think of the times when we have been blessed by the Spirit, both individually and corporately, and we give thanks. Every breath we take is your breath, your spirit bringing alive our very being. The ancients, the people of old, knew this deep truth and understood every breath as acknowledging your holy name. But we confess it's sometimes easy to forget something profound like this or to overlook it. Forgive us when we dismiss your creative love and presence and believe we are the ones that power our own destiny. We need your spirit, advocate, truth and peace bearer. We need the spirit to show us your ways as distinct from attitudes and powers belonging to the world. Forgive us when we long for power over others to get our way or when we are careless towards others and act in ways that create division. As we offer and open ourselves up to Christ's healing, the light shines to call us again to the one who brings our very life, our very being into life. So in the name of Christ, we are alive, we are made new, so we can say together, thanks be to God. We will sing again in a moment, peace. And this is a time to reflect on the gifts we have been given and the offerings we can make. Our offerings now are made through direct transfer in the bank or via the bowl that is just outside the uh, main door as you come into the church. So I invite you to leave uh, offering there or to do a direct transfer and you can read details of that on the newsletter. So let us sing peace. I invite you to... Remain seated as we sing this.
shall we pray? Loving God, Jesus with us, Holy Spirit who empowers us. We thank you for your many gifts to us. We ask a blessing on the gifts we have and what we offer to you and ask that all that we are and all that we offer can be used in your way to reach out into the world, to show your love to all people. And in that vein today we pray for the many in our troubled world, those whom we know who are ill. And in the quiet we spend time just reflecting on those we know who have COVID or are sick in other ways. Pour out your spirit, O God, and bring healing. We pray for the homeless in our society, those people that we that live in the tents we see as we drive down the southern outlet, those people at the showgrounds, those people living in cars, those people who are staying on couches through the generosity of friends and family. We sit here, Lord, in our big church. And we're sorry. Please give us wisdom as to how to reach out, how to make what we have, whether it's through money or buildings or time or passion, to make a change so that this does not have to occur in our society. Please give us wisdom for the use of our buildings and the land and expedite the process that we have been thinking on for a while now of how to use this land for the benefit of others. Thank you for the community we have here. And we ask a blessing on them, O oh God. Thank you for that provision for each one who lives there. And now help us now, God, to know how to go the next step. Pour out your spirit, O oh God, and bring wisdom. We pray for those who are at war whether it's war within themselves, fighting demons, memories that haunt, whether it's a type of war within families or between couples, whether it's war within groups, and whether it's the much more devastating, in so many ways, war we see on our screens, the war in the Ukraine. It's hard to know anymore how to pray, O oh God. But I ask that you pour out your spirit and bring peace. We pray for all those, especially those in Africa at the moment, who live with famine and starvation. So many made homeless, so many starving. Pour out your spirit, O oh God, 
and make us a just world where there is enough food for all. We think <coughs> of the USA. <coughs> we think of the USA and the death and destruction that happens there because of gun control laws. Our hearts break, as do the people who are much more directly affected, of course, at the number of children who are affected, at the stubbornness, the obstinacy of those who will not change, who cannot see the devastation, the destruction that is caused by guns. Pour out your spirit, O God, and change people's hearts so that guns may disappear in that society and people may live at peace and free from fear of violence. We pray for ourselves, Lord, when we are overcome with complacency or just overpowered by the depth of things that happen in the world, the things we see on our TV screens, the things we hear of locally and yet feel like we can do little to change those situations. Pour out your spirit on us, O God, and bring to us a passion to make the change we can make in the place where we are, whether it is one at a time or many joined together. Just guide us and lead us and stir us into action. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We now have our Bible reading. Thanks, Judith. A reading from my favourite translation, the J.B. Phillips, that story that we had for the children's story from Acts. Then when the actual day of Pentecost came, they were all assembled together. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven, like the rushing of a violent wind, and it filled the whole house where they were seated. Before their eyes appeared tongues like flames, which separated off and settled above the head of each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in different languages as the Spirit gave them power to proclaim his message. Now there were staying in Jerusalem Jews of deep faith from every nation of the world. When they heard this sound, a crowd quickly collected and were completely bewildered because each one of them heard these men speaking in his own language. They were absolutely amazed and said in their astonishment, Listen, surely all these speakers are Galileans. Then how does it happen that every single one of us can hear the particular language he has known from a child? There are Parthians, Medes and Elamites. There are men whose homes are in Mesopotamia, in Judea and Cappadocia. Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, 
and the parts of Africa near Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome. There are Jews and proselytes, men from Crete and men from Arabia. Yet we can hear all these men speaking of the magnificence of God in our native language. Everyone was utterly amazed and did not know what to make of it. Indeed, they kept saying to each other, What on earth can this mean? But there were others who laughed mockingly and said, ha, These fellows have drunk too much new wine. Then Peter, with the eleven standing by him, raised his voice and addressed them. Fellow Jews, and all who are living now in Jerusalem, listen carefully to what I say while I explain to you what has happened. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is, after all, only nine o'clock in the morning of this great feast day. No, this is something which was predicted by the prophet Joel. And it shall be in the last days, saith God, I will pour forth of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Yea, and on my servants and on my handmaidens in those days will I pour forth of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the day of the Lord come, that great and notable day. And it shall be that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now skipping through to verse 43. Everyone felt a deep sense of awe while many miracles and signs took place through the apostles. All the believers shared everything in common. They sold their possessions and goods and divided the proceeds among the fellowship according to individual need. Day after day they met by common consent in the temple. They broke bread together in their homes sharing meals with simple joy. They praised God continually and all the people respected them. Every day, the Lord added to their number those who were finding salvation. In this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, now, now it's your turn if you have something you would like to share. A time where you may have felt the Spirit moving, a time when you may have felt close to God. It could be something that occurred to you personally. It could be something that happened in a group situation. Don't feel pressured. If you don't want to, it's okay. But if you have something that you think could help other people and just that's a good story to tell that would help us to know you and a little of your Christian journey because we don't get the opportunity or make the opportunity to share our stories very often. I think there's such strength in story, in knowing each other's stories. So I just invite anyone who would like to, to come up and say a few words. And if there's no one, we won't panic. We have a few other things up our sleeves. Thank you, Anne. Hello, everyone. I haven't been around. I had COVID, and then I had to go to Launceston, and then I had to go to Melbourne, which is actually going to be part of my story. And I'm working a lot more these days. Um, something that has been a great joy but a challenge is I now teach religion at school um, at Mount Carmel to year 10s and study, uh, currently we're studying New Testament miracles. 
I'm really learning a lot, but it's, of course it's been challenging. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really cool. But anyway, I had to ask my girls, have they, had they ever experienced a miracle? This is sort of, you know, in the context of what I was teaching. And uh, I said, I would like to share with you girls the miracle of the tube of paint. So I don't think I would have done this had not Bronwyn said a story. So I was in Melbourne last weekend and uh, saw, I, I, I paint now. Some of you might realise I've begun painting. But anyway, I'd been alerted to this wonderful colour called Naples Yellow and I saw an art shop that had 20% off oil paint. So in I went, I had my sister with me and she's painting as well. So I bought this great big tube of paint cost about $50, but it was on special, and I thought, well, I'll share it with my sister. Um, I only had carry-on baggage. I just had my seven kilo. And returning from Melbourne last Sunday, I was at the airport a lot later than I wanted to be. And, of course, these days when I go through security, it's beep, 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 because there's, there's two lumps of titanium in me. So it's go back, take your scarf off, take your shoes off, da 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 carry on. But anyway, it was a very fraught environment. Um, they only had two security lanes open and there was one lady on one of them who was yelling at the man who was marshalling people and it was just a really, people were late, it was just a very tense environment. Anyway, my bag gets pinged because of the tube of paint. You can't take this on the plane. I said, it's sealed, you know, what's the issue? You can't. Okay. I said, well, what do you suggest? She said, go downstairs, see if they'll check it for you. So off I go downstairs and the, the Jetstar counter's got a mile long thing. I thought, I'll, I'll, I'm saying, God, what, what do I do here? What do I do? And I was totally prepared to abandon the paint. I thought, I'll look around for any Tasmanians. I'll see if there's someone who will take my paint for me. But it was actually pretty late. And I thought anyone who's checked bags would have done it a while ago. And... Um, Anyway, I you know, just explored a few options. I thought, I don't want to do. I still had the paint in my pocket, so up I go again. Um, and then the queue is longer and time's ticking away. But I get up there and uh, there's still this angry woman over here and the man marshalling. And as I approach the man, I think in some ways I was trying to... I don't know. I was trying to be in the spirit, really. Because as I approached the man, I just paused. And he said, oh, stop, because he was sending me over to the same place. And he said, oh, you go over there. Win. And, of course, beep, 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 beep. So off with the scarf, off with the shoes, off with the coat, the whole thing. And I had this wonderful fluffy scarf. And it's in a tray with my coat and shoes. And then it's trailing behind and gets caught in the rollers. And then the whole conveyor belt comes to a halt. And it was, it was halted for about 10 minutes and, like, tension. People, I'm missing my flight. Da, 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 da. My flight was at 4 and this was at 20 to 4. And Terminal 3, you know how long you've got to go. And uh, so, anyway, she, she's at the point where she's about to pull the scissors out and cut my scarf, but eventually it's released. And, uh, you know, just angry people everywhere. And so, anyway, my, my tray's delivered and she said, there's something wrong with your jacket. We need to, I said, it's the tube of paint. I said, here it is. <laughs> and it's in the little tray. And she said, no, 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 it's something else. I said, twice. It's the tube of paint. <laughs> she goes, no, no. She said, it's something to do with your jacket. I said, oh, do you think it's this brooch here? Yes, she said, that's it. <laughs> and gate closing in four minutes, I ran. Did my knee joint a huge disservice. Um, and I was the last one on the plane. And nothing happened with the tube of paint. I still have my tube of paint. But it was interesting sharing that story with the, the girls at school. One of them described it as a first world miracle. Um, and I thought, well, what, what even was I doing here? You know, I was prepared to abandon the paint, but I was also just prepared to listen. I was just prepared to sort of go with the flow. But, you know, I was, I was just prepared to listen. And I think the only... I mean, I was just calm and probably just read the room when I paused and didn't go down that line. Um, but anyway, that is for your amusement more than anything. Um, <laughs> the miracle of the tube of paint. Thank you, thank you, Anne. 
uh, yeah, God works in all situations, even when we're not aware. Would anyone else like to share? Thanks, Anne. Another Anne. Um, when you think back and, and look back at uh, the things that have happened, uh, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was the alternative thing when I just couldn't reach God at all when my mother died at 67 years of age and I felt like I was lamenting like in the, in the Psalms because I couldn't find God anywhere in the grief. But looking back later, when you look back, you can see that... Um, God was walking with me at that time. Um, and I think of other things, a lot of things I've done in my life is because there's been a deep compulsion in, my, in me that I need to go and do these things. And um, <clears throat> I think that is a way of God, you know, encouraging me to maybe use the gifts that he's given to me. Um, I was going to say something else. Um, I've often um, thought about um, the text where um, Jesus said, "If the things that you do for others, they are the things that you do for me." And I've often sort of turned it around, and thought, "Well, doing things for others because you want to, you need to. It's like you're doing the work of Jesus in the practical sense in the world." And you know, we all do that all the time and it's a it's an easy way to explain to children to what what Jesus means when he says what you do for others you do for me so there's some um, you know there's so many different ways that that God is talking to us and uh, and in a lot of the or inspiring us and you know in some of the things that I have done where I've been away from family and far away it's been lonely um, and that's been quite hard but you know you walk through and God walks with you. Thanks, Liz. I've got a, a little picture um, in my mind that I'd like to share. I, I don't really know what it means, but um, years ago, and I was much fitter and healthier, I would walk from up at the top of the outlet in Hobart down, I'd park my car and I'd walk all the way down to the Royal, and that was my exercise, and it used to be a fabulous walk down, and it was quite quick, and I used to see all sorts of things on the way and I realised that there's like two lives of Hobart. There's the daytime life and the nighttime life and you see the, the, all the things that are left from the nighttime life when you're walking down. And I used to think about and pray that God would help me do a good job that day at work and I've always loved going to work. And I'm standing at the corner waiting for the lights to change and looking across at my favourite tree near the Hobart Private. It's this beautiful tree and it's got all the seasons in it anyway. And so I'm standing there waiting and I have this picture of this is what life is here, like this. And... I reach up to the corner of this picture and pull it down and there's God. It's this beautiful, great, shining thing that's peeking out from behind this life that we have. And that's the only thing I could think of was that was God. I am moved. Twenty-five years or so ago, 
a little Bosnian village. The Serbs came over the hill. They separated the men, took them away and slaughtered them. A lady, a nurse and a little boy made their way to Launceston where Trinity Uniting Church had a refugee support group. The little boy was brilliant. He went in school, learnt English, did very well. He's now 33 years old. And he has a disease, he's in a coma. A surgeon said, the only thing that can save him now is a miracle or prayer. This lady, a devout Muslim, is still in contact with our support group in Launceston. And she asked for prayers. A Muslim lady asking her Christian friends for prayer for her son dying. That's my story. Thank you, Terry. Let's pause for a moment and reflect on what we've heard. The love of God that is shown in so many different ways. The Holy Spirit at work. Let's just be quiet and give thanks. Thank you, God, that you work in so many ways. Thank you for the stories we have heard and all those that have been unsaid today because we all have those stories, part of the patchwork of life and those gold threads of your presence, binding it all together, binding us together, shining through small things, and large things, through sadness and grief, through joy. We thank you now for those moments. And we ask our God to open our souls, our hearts, our minds, to listen to hear, to speak and to act in your name. Amen. And we sing, O breath of life,
let's go from this place confident in the love of God with Jesus walking beside us and the Holy Spirit always to guide us. In the name of Christ. Amen. Oh, Lord. 